yeah that's um wow 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 um i don't know if i can necessarily say this but this gotta be the most this gotta be the most calf thing i've ever heard calf meaning confederation of african football you know the confederation is called calf um that gotta be the most african thing i've ever heard oh my goodness like oh my goodness this is unbelievable um that you know that's that's wow unbelievable 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 so let me get this straight okay this is you know the nigerian national team were sh number one they were tra traveling to play um libya they were trying traveling to play libya at the martyrs of february stadium in benghazi libya okay so they were traveling to play um the libyan team you know in an african cup of nation qualifier but um they in you know but instead of reaching the airport the right airport that they were supposed to go they were diverted their flight ended up being diverted into an airport that was hours away from the airport of the match venue uh of the match venue um and they were when they they got to an airport you know diverted away an airport away from their match venue and they were stuck there for uh about more than 16 hours um at that airport that was about 250 kilometers away which is 155 miles away from where they were supposed to play at and according to william trust ekong who's their captain uh of the nigerian football uh, of the niger uh, nigerian football national team uh, you know he you know he and the nigerian football team it was a um, he was he's the one that came out and saying in protest of the fl of the whole issue of them being stranded of their flight being diverted all that they the players and staff um, in protest at their flight and then um, and then the players and staff being abandoned for hours at the airport being abandoned with apparently no food um, nowhere to be no hotel no reception team no vehicles to take them anywhere to a hotel nothing just b them being stranded there all alone the, yeah that's that's un you know that's that's insane that is absolutely insane to me you know and that's actually a scary thing almost being stranding there having no communication from what i hear not having wi-fi at certain periods that wow like that has to be a a devastating thing to you know be going through and something that i honestly i don't blame them for you know for boycotting that because that's that's just unbelievable and that's not right um um, the airport is, was three hours away in Benghazi. Um, uh, the airport was three hours away. Their hotel was three hours away in Benghazi. And they had no communication, nobody to even talk to them. And they're just stranded there trying to figure out what's going on. The players, the staff, the coaches. It's just quite ridiculous to me, quite crazy. And and it's something I've never seen. And, uh, and yeah, um, you know... Um, Trost Ekong said, um, as the captain together with the team, we have decided that we will not play this game. Apparently, our plane is being filled as we speak and we should be leaving soon to Nigeria. CAF also said in a statement um, that the matter has been referred to the um uh, the matter has been referred to the CAF Disciplinary Board for investigation and appropriate actions will be taken against those who violated the CAF statuses and regulations. You see some of the pictures of the players laying on those cheap airport seats that, you know, and now I'm not saying that those airport seats, which just in general, you're at an airport, those uncomfortable seats that you're sitting on, them having to lay down there, them being stranded. Imagine being stranded in an airport for 16 hours i couldn't i'd lose my mind and, the, and i'd lose my mind and these are players you know naturally professional players they don't even go through security you know they don't even go through security they're professional players they got millions of dollars they're you know they're part of a big organization normally they you know they check the passport and they go straight through there's no security check there's no waiting in the long lines there's none of that 
for them to go through what they had to go through is just something that they're not been used to and definitely was something was an uncomfortable moment and it's something out of the frustration after you know and i wonder what is you know you're being stranded there what is the cutoff where in there you know as a unit that they says that oh they're gonna protest you know if they're stranded there only for about five six hours you know are they still gonna let it go because for me that's still crazy being stranded at the airport six hours no communication no nothing where was the um you know where was the the oh, the cutoff period where they you know they're like all right this is enough you know or is this something at the end that they just finally decided nah we're not doing this we're going home this is what you know um it's something that CAF has to look into i believe this is something both footballing federations have to go through i think maybe even government officials have to get involved because these are players you know these are citizen livelihoods you know being affected with the unfair treatment there's the libyan federation where it seems like from the major consensus belief there and uh, um you know some players have adopted this you know theory as well and it's you know it's a uh, and it's something that's probably very likelihood that all this came from the libyan um from the libyan footballing not footballing federation but the, yeah the libyan football federation in order to to get a competitive advantage um with the nigerians you know with you know affecting their more you know team morality being stuck at an airport for that long you know affecting you know you know affecting their energy levels of just being sitting at an airport being stranded there the whole emotional and physical toll that this can take on a team it seems like that's what the major consensus is is that libya did this on purpose the federation did this on purpose to gain an advantage in these high stake afcon qualifiers to qualify for the african cup of nations in morocco next year look you know if that's the case you know there gotta be some heavy sanctioning for libya i do have to say heavy sanctioning i'm talking point deductions i'm talking major fines because that is crazy that is that is cruel and unusual punishment 14 hours of players being stranded at the airport with n forget no food no no food no wi-fi no place to sleep and the worst of it all no communication no communication of what is going on if they do this investigation that a calf said that they'll do when they deem all this what i previously just said to be true you gotta speak major 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 punishment for libya because look in my opinion in my humble opinion there is a fine line there's a fine line between um there's a fine line between gamesmanship and gaining a competitive advantage within the spirit of the game. And then this is just flat out crazy, ridiculous. I can't even put into words I'm speechless. That is crazy. 14 plus, that's not within the spirit of the game. Now, there's other ways to gain a competitive advantage with the spirit of the game. You know, you're talking, you know, make it difficult for the players and bus to get to the you know stadium, things like that, you know. You know, I'm, when I say make it difficult, I mean like, you know, have a lot of people crowd the streets. No throwing anything at the bus or anything like that, but something of that sort. Something of making it a little bit difficult here and there. Maybe, you know, I see in American sports in the past, you talk about Celtics Lakers series. They turn the AC off in the visitor's locker room. Something like that. Look, is that, you know, within this, you know, is that morally right? Probably not, but at least... It's not cruel. You know, this is cruel. What they did to the Nigerian players is cruel. So some, I think, believe some major sanctioning should fall. And, and how does this even happen? How does is this even happen? CAF needs to come because now it comes from the top. This even being able to happen, there's an issue when it comes to the top. And that's issues that they have to fix as well, in my opinion. This is a this is a you know confederation that is gonna get a World Cup, not this World Cup, but in 2020 30, where they'll be hosting some of the games in Morocco. Um, so, you know, there's something that they need to you know they need to get on top of this and get on top of this fast. 